So I'm going to tell you a few things about, uh, first of all, about Ireland, uh, and then I'm going to tell you a few things about the school that I represent and our offer, and a few things about you know what's so interesting about Ireland and why you should come to Ireland, because even though it's a tiny, tiny little country, uh, it's an amazing country. Uh, we have a very, very nice population, so you'll definitely love it. So uh, I'm, we're just just. Press the button whenever you you, you feel like. So uh, I represent uh, Swan, uh, Swan English Language Training, and uh, we are based in Ireland. Uh, Ireland, 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 Ireland. Ireland. <laughs> uh, we're based in in Ireland in Dublin. But before I tell you a few things about uh, Ireland, can you tell me what do you know when, when you hear Ireland? What do you think of? Just give me a few leprechauns. Well, no. Anything else? St. Patrick, that's true, well done. Anything else? Gingers, okay, we don't say that, red hair. <laughs> okay, anything else? Absolutely, I didn't want to be very Irish, so I didn't wear green, but my socks are green, uh, I think. Uh, anything else? When you, hear, when you hear Ireland. Okay, so actually, basically, you know, can you kind of cover this? Uh, of course, these are the cliché. Yes, there's much more to that. So if you if you press the button a few a few times, uh, so uh, you already mentioned the color. Uh, of course, we are a very very green country. Uh, so this is well known. We're also very well known for this, the best thing in Ireland. Yes, Guinness. Uh, have you ever tried it? No. Well, don't. Okay, don't. Because <laughs> in Russia, it's not good. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, we're very well known for our rain. Yeah, in Russia you're very well known for your snow, which I first, I touched the snow today. Like, yes, I'm like a baby, yes, no. Uh, but we're very well known for our rain, because it rains a lot, but also because we have a lot of, lot of rainbow. Uh, so that's great. And of course, we're known for our red hair, no, not ginger. And of course, we're known for our sheep, yeah. Uh, Ireland has a population of 4.6 million, and we have 8 million sheep. Yes, and 6 million cows, so there are more animals than people. Uh, and also, we're very well known for St. Patrick, well done. But these are some of the cliché, as in people, when people hear about Ireland, this is what they think of. However, we're, we're uh, more famous for other things as well, so if you if you press, for example, we're famous for our landscape. This is the Atlantic Ocean, the cliffs of Moher. Uh, eight kilometers long. We're famous for our castles, very romantic castles. Actually, this is a story of a romantic lake. We're famous for our highest cliffs in Europe, 600 meters. And the next is New York. Uh, we're famous for our uh, churches and our cathedrals. Because we've been, we've been, uh, you know, um, occupied for about 800 years, but nobody else came, so we didn't destroy them. So these are just a few. But we're also known for our famous writers, some of the most famous in the world. For example, Jonathan Swift. Everybody knows him. Uh, we have, who's that? Oscar Wilde. Oscar Wilde. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, he's quite famous. Who's this one? Somebody said, James. James Joyce, he's also yeah, very, very famous. He's actually known as the father of modern novel. This is one of the most romantic uh, writer, William Butler Yeats, so very, very romantic. This is George Bernard Shaw, so he's also very famous. And then just another one is Samuel Beckett. So lots and lots and lots of famous writers. And these are only the old ones, but we even have nowadays, we have very, very, very famous writers. For example, these three, those three, they won the Nobel Prize for, no, it's fine, the Nobel Prize for Literature. There are actually four, four uh, writers who, who won the Nobel Prize for Literature. But I'm not here to only tell you about Ireland. I'm here to tell you a few things about our school, SWAN, and what we represent. Uh, we are based in the city center, and because we are an English language training, uh, of course, one of the first things we offer is uh, language school. So we offer uh, English courses. I'm going to tell you a few details about this. We've been in the market for uh, about 30 years because we were founded in 1988. So that means we know a few things about education. Uh, we have taught students from 120 countries. 
Because of this, we have an international reputation. People from around the world, they know about us. If I, when I go to different fairs, they say, oh, I've heard of SWAN. Also, we are state recognized. Uh, these three, three symbols means that the Irish state recognizes the school. This is uh, Marketing uh, English in Ireland, is, a, is an organization that promotes English abroad and also helps the students with the visa process. And equals is an international uh, body that every two years comes and checks the school, checks the, the classrooms, checks the teachers, checks, they, they also check uh, our uh, syllabus, what we teach, the families where students stay, and if they're happy with that, they give you their accreditation. So we're happy to be, uh, to be recognized. And we've been recognized for about 30 years and equals 20 years, so you get the guarantee of a good English language course. Also, uh, one of the, 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 the interesting thing about uh, schools is uh, the fact that we are located right in the city center. For example, Moscow, the city center of Moscow is what? Kremlin. Yeah? Well, we are 100 meters from the city center. So, on a pedestrian street, Grafton Street, uh, you might have, uh, you know, might recognize the name from different songs, but we are right in the middle. And also, we have a very dynamic and friendly staff. Uh, all our staff is fully qualified, so they all have qualifications in English teaching. Some of them have masters in English teaching or a different type of masters. We have uh, teachers from Canada, from uh, Australia, from uh, obviously from Ireland, and from the US. So if you study with us, you're not just going to hear the Irish accent, you're going to, to encounter teachers from other uh, English-speaking countries. So you're going to get used to different uh, accents. So basically, what do we offer? First of all, we offer English uh, classes. Uh, the, the most uh, say, uh, common uh, offer we have is English courses, just general English. We have classes in the morning, in the afternoon, we offer uh, intensive or semi-intensive, depends on you know, how much you want to, want to study. Uh, another thing we offer is IELTS preparation course. And this IELTS preparation is a bit different from other um, IELTS because our program runs all year. Okay, so you don't have to wait for specific dates to come and do the course. You can come any Monday. Yeah? We have two cycles of six months and you join any Monday, you stay for two, three, four, five, six months as long as you want and you're almost guaranteed to pass the test. So far we have 97% uh, success rate. So that's very high. Uh, of course, uh, we also offer uh, a one-to-one -one lessons. So for students who want to focus on something specific, for example, you say, I want to improve my pronunciation, but in the class, I can't really do that. You can have a one-to-one -one session with the teacher, only work on your pronunciation. So we focus on different things. And also, what is different um, is the fact that, apart from the English language, we also offer teacher training courses. Yeah? So you, if you want to become an English teacher, well, you're in the right place. Uh, one of the courses, the most popular course we offer is CELD, Certificate in English Language Training, uh, which means basically, if you want to become an English teacher, you have to have a good level of English. You're going to study for four weeks, very, very, very intensive. It's eight hours every day. Four weeks, very practical. You're going to teach, practice for six, uh, six hours, and then you're going to observe teachers for six hours. So you do this, and then after four weeks, you are allowed to teach English. Also, we, if you're already a teacher, okay, like your teachers, you want to learn new methods, new ideas, you can do a teacher refresher course, one or two weeks. Uh, you can also do CLIL, which is content and uh, language integrated learning. Basically, what this means, uh, we take a text and we make the text into a lesson. Okay, so you learn how to adapt any material to make it an English lesson. Because you can learn from anything. Then we also uh, teach ICT, Internet, uh, uh, sorry, Internet Information and uh, Communication and Technology. Basically it means to use all this technology. Sometimes teachers and professors are not very happy to use modern technology, Internet and projectors and uh, because they're kind of, I like my books and that's it. But we teach you how to integrate that into your own lessons. 
But apart from this, now, uh, like I said, the most popular one is CELT, the Certificate in English Language Training. And um, you might have heard of it, so if you want to uh, press one, again. Uh, this, is, this is what the CELT offers. If you compare CELT with TEFL, uh, some people want to do it online. Well, you have to be very careful because if you do TEFL online, it's not uh, necessarily guaranteed you will be allowed to teach because if you do it online, you have no interaction with real students. It's all online, you can. Whereas if you do CELT, apart from you know your, your practical teaching, you're actually going to be in a class with real students and you have to teach real lessons. Okay, so you see the difference. Also, uh, CELT and CELTA, it's actually the same certificate. CELTA is given by the, Ox uh, the, by the Cambridge University, but it says 120 20 hours, six hours of teaching, and if you look at CELT, it's exactly the same. The difference is CELTA is awarded by Cambridge, CELT is awarded by Irish Education Department. So they're both equally the same. You can teach in Russia, you can teach in Turkey, in China, in any other country with both certificates. Okay? So that's, the, both, that's the, 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 the great news about. Also, apart from this, uh, when you're doing your CELD, you're going to cover different topics. So just press an another one. Press all the, all the way down. You're going to teach, uh, actually you're going to cover how to, uh, to manage your class, how to teach your speaking and your listening, you, yeah, how to analyze. You look at the text, how do I analyze this language? Because it's very, very important. Uh, how to teach, to teach small groups, one-to-one, -one, big groups, uh, groups that have the same language, groups that have different languages, you know. So uh, you're going to, to do all this, how to correct the errors. It's not always nice to say, no, you're wrong there. Yeah, you have to do it in a nice way so then the student can uh, learn and you don't want to scare the student like, oh, I'm not going to say anything again. Yeah? So you're going to, to learn different, uh, different approaches, you can, you can uh, press. You, uh, we're going to teach you how to use games, how to use different activities. It's not all about let's sit down and learn. We can, we can play and while we play games, you still learn English because we do games in English. Uh, we're going to teach you how to you how to teach vocabulary and pronunciation. Yeah, uh, how to uh, do the testing because you will through your career you will have to teach exams and so on. So as you can see, there are lots and lots of things that are covered in this uh, in this course. But apart from this, we also offer some specialty courses, and one of the most popular is aviation English. For example, people who are already learning how to become pilots in their own country, they can come to our school and one of our pilots is going to teach you how to speak like a pilot. Yeah? So we have an English uh, course and then it's a special, special language you have to use uh, as a pilot and then they will teach you. Also, we're going to take you to um, an airport to show you how an airport works. Okay, the control tower and so on. Apart from this, if you want to study at an Irish university, we have International Foundation Program, uh, which means that you're going to be in, in, uh, in uh, our universities, you're going to spend one year to improve your English and to learn how to write an essay and presentation, and then after that you can uh, join a university. Also, we have a professional development or internship as a work placement, if you're staying in Ireland for six months, you are allowed to stay two months extra and you can use those two months for whatever you want, to travel, to do nothing. But all, most of the students choose to go to work in a company. So you get experience from an Irish company, you're going to use your English even more, and you can choose different companies that match what you would like to do. Okay? Because we work with 40 different companies architecture, uh, management, uh, advertisement, hotels, and uh, HR, recruitment. Uh, so we work with different companies and you can choose one of the profiles. So uh, if you press again, this is just a summary of the courses we offer, you know, from the English classes to teacher training, uh, specialty courses. Uh, so that's why I, I was saying we're not just a language school. However, 
Uh, of course, you have to study a lot, but it's not all about study, it's also about fun. So, uh, we have um, activity, an activity program. What, means, what it means is, in the morning, we're going to study, but in the afternoon, we're going to have fun. So, if you press a few times, we're going to visit different castles in Dublin or around Dublin. We're going to visit some museums, uh, some churches, very famous churches um, that we have in Ireland. Of course, it's Ireland, we have to go to a pub as well, yes, because... Uh, and then we're going to teach you how to do Irish dancing. You're going to watch a show and you're going to learn how to do it. So there's also, you know, uh, the fun part, not just study, study, study. Of course, you have to study, but it's nice to have fun a little bit as well. So uh, if you're going to study uh, with us, because our school is right in the city center, you're going to study in the heart of Dublin and you can stay with an Irish mummy. Yes, as in what we offer is we offer uh, accommodation in uh, host families. Yeah, so you're going to stay if you want. You can stay with uh, an Irish family. So you're going to experience our life, uh, what our houses are like, uh, what we eat, well, potatoes, a lot of potatoes, um, and you know what we do and so on. Also, if you want to be more independent. Uh, you can choose student accommodation. You can share apartments with other students if you don't want to be with the family. Uh, we do have apartments where you share the rooms and uh, the kitchen you have to clean and cook and, you know, for yourself if you like to be independent. In the summer, if you want to be very, very independent, you can choose student residence, yeah? So you can, uh, it's this one, for example, NCI, National College of Ireland. Uh, this one, for example, is only uh, 12 minutes walk from our school. So you stay in your own room, you have your own bathroom, and then you only share the, the apartment, not the room. It's alone in your own. So we have different options to match uh, all our students. So the question is, why should you study in Ireland? Well, first of all, because our English is easy to understand. I'm sure everybody understands me, right? You do. Uh, also, we are a safe country. Uh, and safety is very, very important now uh, because, unfortunately, uh, there are so many conflicts in the world. Uh, there, are very, there are not a lot of countries where you can go and not worry about all safety. Whereas in Ireland, we're lucky not to have any problems. We don't fight with anyone. We don't have any wars. So it's great. Uh, apart from safety, our people are very friendly. Uh, we do like to smile a lot, even on the bus. Yeah, even when we're tired in the morning, we do smile. Uh, you can actually talk to people, no problem. Uh, if you're on the bus for 20 minutes, you can start a conversation with somebody next to you. And when they hear, where are you from? Russia. Oh, Putin. And then they're going to tell you lots of things that they think about Russia. You know. So uh, we love to talk, and you're going to be, f you're going to feel very, very at ease, at friendly people. Also, apart from this, we're quite. Uh, a multinational and cosmopolitan city um, because Dublin is becoming more and more attractive uh, to young students and not just young students but also young people and we're getting people from all over the world so in Dublin you'll hear people speaking Japanese and Portuguese from you know Brazil and uh, all the countries in the world so it's, it's quite interesting and also uh, it's the fact that we have a young and educated population the average age in Ireland is 35, so very, very young, compared, for example, to Italy, where the average age is 42. In Germany, it's 49. So people are growing older in other countries. We still are quite young. Now, these are just, these are just a few, but look at all these companies, yeah? I'm sure you recognize all of them. These are all in Dublin, and this is just a small number. Well, there are about uh, eight or nine there. Imagine we have 72 international companies in Dublin alone. So, if these companies come to Dublin, well, obviously, there is something interesting that we can offer. And that's why I would say this is the reason why you should come to Ireland and to study in Dublin. So, uh, the question is also then, why would you study in Swan? and if you just press all the buttons. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, 
there, you will see them in a few minutes, yeah. Uh, we are centrally located, so we're in the heart of Dublin. Uh, we were established 30 years ago, so we have a lot of experience. Uh, we have our international reputation. We have all the accreditation, so you, you do get uh, all the quality, because we have to, we have to offer quality. Otherwise, the government will take our title. But, just before I finish, one of the things that it's different from our teaching, uh, compared to, to, let's say, other schools. We offer a different approach to teaching, okay, to your English. We're not going to give you a book and say, okay, open page one, page two, page three, and next week, page seven. Yeah, very exciting, okay? We have a different approach. Our approach is called topic-based syllabus. What does it mean is every two weeks, we choose a topic, okay? For example, we choose music, these two weeks. So, everything we do these two weeks is going to be related to music. We're going to read an article about music, we're going to, to, listen, something about mu to uh, listen to something about music, we're going to watch videos about music. So, everything these two weeks is going to be related to music. Therefore, when you read an article, from those articles we're going to extract grammar, we're going to extract vocabulary, we're going to extract uh, different uh, problems, pronunciation and so on, certain skills. We're going to ask you to read, uh, or you're going to ask, we're going to ask you to write something about music. So at the end of a week or two weeks, you're learning not just things about grammar, but you're learning about things about grammar in the context of an article, of a story. You're going to learn everything about, well, not everything, but you're going to a lot of things about one topic, which are very practical, because next day you can go out and you can talk to your friends and say, oh, I know something about music, because it's a very common topic. You know, usually in the books you have, hello, my name is Tom, I have a dog, I like ice cream. Okay, this is the typical text. Well, not everybody has a dog, okay? Not everybody likes ice cream. Yeah. So, uh, we don't use just these kind of texts that are so boring. We actually use real text. We take text from books, from, from newspapers. We actually bring newspaper to the class. Okay, let's see. What do people talk about in Ireland today? Yeah. So, it's very practical English, which you can go out and start using it straight away. So this is our approach, that's why we call it topic-based syllabus. We choose a topic, in two weeks the next topic is going to be politics. So we learn words about politics, uh, the vocabulary, and then we learn grammar that uh, is used very often. Uh, then it's going to be crime, you know, tenses, English tenses we use to describe crime, vocabulary. Then we're going to use, uh, you know, different, different topics, news or technology. So every topic has its own uh, you know, uh, vocabulary, its own grammar, and that's what it becomes very, very practical. So basically, this is what we offer. Now, I've been talking for uh, a long time, so if you want to press again, now it's your turn to talk. And don't be shy to ask questions in English, because ya nie gabari polski. Okay, that's all I know. Uh, so, uh, do you have questions for me? Uh, about you know about Swan about Ireland, um, I'm, I'm willing to to hear and obviously I'm going to answer your questions. So, any questions for me? Uh, which is the uh, A combination of our teachers and the students. Every Monday, the students are allowed, as in we offer them the possibility to choose some of the elements. So we say, students, this week is going to be music. Okay? Is there anything you would like to study in particular? Uh, and then you can tell, yeah, can we you know, do something about Irish music? So then the teachers will insert that, uh, okay, you want to say, I know, well, we're going to do this grammar, but can we do something about, let's say, the second conditional, because we're not very good at it. Okay, so the teacher will insert the second conditional in the topic, because there's, you know, you, you take a song, if I were a boy, so that's the second conditional, yes. So we're going to look at the song, how is it used, and so on. So the students have some input every Monday. Then, uh, during, uh, during the week, uh, on the wall, you will have the objectives, as in there, are, there is a list of things we expect you to know by the end of the week. Yes, so you can check with the teacher. Okay, teacher, we didn't do this, why? So you can also tell the teacher, well, we have to do this list because it's written there. Yeah? Plus, you have the flexibility because you get to, to input and to, to add something to the syllabus. Thank you very much. Any other questions? What about visas? What about visas? Well, the good thing about visa is that uh, we love Russians. 
so therefore the visa process is much easier compared to the UK for example. You don't need biometrics, so you don't need to go to the, uh, to the Irish Embassy. Uh, very, very, very rarely there is an interview. So most of the times you just send your passport and they'll go to send you the visa. Uh, it's it's uh, the list for requirements, you know, all the documents and all the papers you need. It's much shorter than for other countries. Uh, so we have all these advantages now. Uh, the only the only little problem is that there are no direct flights to Dublin. Okay? But it doesn't matter because you can fly through Paris, you can fly to, to Amsterdam, through Frankfurt, so there are lots of other options. And I paid return tickets, you know, Dublin, uh, for, uh, Dublin Paris, Moscow, I, played, I, I paid uh, 420 euro. So it's not even that expensive, you know, I would expect to be a bit more. Now in the summer, in the summer, there is one direct flight, S7, so that might be a little bit more expensive, but if you plan ahead, I'm sure it's not difficult. So the visa process is quite easy. Uh, Vladimir, who is uh, the representative, a uh, SWAG representative here in, in Moscow, actually he, he can give you all the details about uh, the visa. So the good thing is that if you're deciding to, to come, you send all the passports to him and he takes care of this. So you don't have to worry. That's what uh, is he, you know, he's here for. Uh, so it is quite it is quite easy to get an Irish visa. Uh, that's because we've never had any problems with with Russia. You know, we're friends, so why not just make it easy for them? Hopefully, there will be more direct flights, so that's going to be even easier for you to uh, to come to Ireland. If you have a British visa, you are allowed to come to Ireland. But if you have an Irish visa, you cannot go to. Uh, to England or UK because our visa process is easier than theirs so then you have to go again through the same procedure yes so if you're if you have a UK visa then you can come to Ireland as well any other questions don't be shocked about the weather in June it's going to be about uh, 21 degrees maximum because we don't have really hot weather uh, in the summer uh, you usually get 25 degrees, for us it's like, yes, very hot. But usually it's about 18 to 20 degrees, it rains about uh, 10 minutes, every 10 minutes. Uh, so yeah, of course we do have a bit of rain, uh, but it's, it's, it's not cold and you know, it's going to rain 10 times a day, 10 minutes stops for half an hour. So, uh, so that's why actually Ireland is so nice and green, yes, but we don't mind, nobody minds the rain in Ireland. Other questions? Uh, yes, please. Our company, the Anthony is our company, is really willing to take non-native speakers for a job because he thought that the two months would be staying work there, but um, are they usually willing because you know, yes. they might be from? No, absolutely. They're willing because they have certain they have contracts with us because you're not really getting a job, okay? You're actually doing internship, which is different. For example, uh, we had a Romanian student. Okay, he's, he's studying business in his own country, he's studying a business manager and he came to our school, he did uh, an English course only for two weeks because his English was very very good, a C1 level and then he decided to do an internship for one month and he did an internship with a company that does uh, recruitment. Uh, one month he was actually uh, there, first week he was doing you know, files and stuff, but in the second and third week because his English was so good and he was very very good, uh, straight away they asked him to make phone calls, to call people, to arrange interviews, and actually the la in the last week, in his fourth week, he did the interviews himself, because it's a, just a set of questions. So yes, they are willing, we place, uh, we place students from all over the world, we had a group of Czechs, uh, you know, students and 12 of them and they came to us uh, yes absolutely they are because you're not getting a job okay you're getting an internship and they know you're going to be there for a maximum two months and then you go uh, so that's it of course the internship is unpaid but the idea is you get the experience yeah so absolutely absolutely uh, willing to do that uh, the, the great thing is the better your English the more chances you have to get real work. If your English is really bad, then all they do is, well, bring coffee, do this, you know, photocopy this. But if your English is good, and because you're staying for two months rather than one or two weeks, they know, okay, in the first two weeks, this person is going to get used to the company. But after that, this person can actually work because he's going to be here for another six weeks. Now, if you're staying for a very short time, 
two weeks or three weeks, usually they don't really give you work because they know, well, by the time you learn, you have to go. So what's the point? Okay? That's why we advise our students to, to take the whole, uh, two, you know, the, the, the full two months to take advantage of that. Because that way, you're actually going to really, really work. Okay? Other questions before? What's about free classes and uh, Free classes, we do offer free classes for all our students if they want to join us. Usually the free classes are in the afternoon. So you're going to study from 9 until 1 o'clock in the morning. And then you, you know, we have lunch and so on. And in the afternoon, sometimes we have free classes at 4 o'clock, at 5 o'clock. So you can join that as well. Accommodation is going to be, uh, we have a range of we have different, if you don't want family, that's the first option and the cheapest option and that's actually the best because you're going to live with an Irish family, you're going to, uh, we, we are going to place you uh, in the same family where probably there is a Spanish student, so then you, know, you make friends you, and you have to speak English because unless you speak Spanish or the other person speaks Russian. So it's great because we kind of, uh, you know, in inverted commas, we force you to speak English. If you don't like families, we have student apartments. Or if you don't like student apartments, we have some other apartments where you can be alone. We have like studios uh, available, or you can stay in a hostel, yeah? you're free, or we can book a hotel for you. Now obviously that's going to be more expensive. Hotels and hostels are more expensive than uh, host families because if you're getting a host family, you're only renting one bed. You know? So that's much, much... Uh, so we do have a range of, of options. Uh, depends a lot on the period. For example, June to September, it's very, very busy. So it's going to be a bit more difficult and a bit more expensive. But if you're coming uh, other times of the year, it's easier. So we do have a range of uh, accommodation available and prices. You know, it starts 185 a week with accommodation and meals. So you get your breakfast and your dinner with the family. All you have to do is just buy your lunch. Okay, so that's kind of the, the lowest and the maximum it can go depends on the hotel you want. If you want to stay in a five-star hotel, that's going to be, you know, 300 a night. Yeah. I don't believe you. <laughs> Joking. Uh, yes, so there is accommodation for everybody. Okay, so uh, thank you very much then for having listened to me. I hope uh, this was uh, entertaining for you and, uh, you know, got some news. Uh, if you press again, uh, Vladimir, Vladimir Grishin is at the back and he is uh, our representative, so he can give you all the details and he speaks perfect Russian. Yeah, that's very, very handy. So, uh, thank you very much for your attention.